And we're good to go. The lost light is refueled, the condimentants are purring like a turbo fox in heat, and Perceptor says he can use magic to get us back to the Galactic Rim in a single epic jump. Goodbye, Optimus. I'll call you when we get to Cyber Utopia. Promise? Bro! Wish us luck, because who knows? Maybe the Knights can help us find a cure for your personality. And if you get cross with me, remember, it's not the table's fault. Where have you been? Prime wanted us here ten minutes ago. Us? Since then was Starscream one of us. Sorry, Rodimus. No one leaves the planet and we've decided what to do with Megatron. My people want a trial. Okay, firstly, deja vu. Secondly, why bother putting Megatron on trial when his guilt is literally beyond doubt? And the Talking Sense Award goes to... Prowl! What did we say about muttering? Oh, come on! I defy anyone to stand next to Megatron and with a straight face say, I think we should hear his side of the story. I say skip the crime and focus on the punishment. We have two options. Public execution, indefinite spark containment, or public execution. You said public execution twice. Cognitive bias, look it up. We can't remove Megatron's spark without killing him. His internal organs are shot. It's amazing he's still alive. Did I say amazing? I meant depressing. As I said, my people want a trial. Starscream, will you stop saying my people? They're not your people. They're not your anything. They're ordinary Cybertronian citizens who went insane and put you in charge. Any day now, they'll wake up, realize what they've done, and kill themselves. Suicide by Facebook. The people will get their trial. Deciding Megatron's fate in secret would only reinforce the suspicion that we operate outside of the law. In the absence of a chief justice, I shall sit in judgment. You realize that makes this a military trial? Yeah. Not really sure if a military trial passes your transparency test. There is precedent. Phobos was tried by a military court in open session, as was Desicles. If it's held in public, it stands. Prowl. I hereby appoint you Principal Prosecutor. Standard rules of deliberation apply. Let me know which of the five dialects you intend to adopt. Ultra Magnus, Megatron will need someone to advocate on his behalf. Someone who knows the law. You will act as orator for the defense. I... Yes. Yes, of course. Good. In which case, we will reconvene in an hour to discuss Order of Counsel. You seem very eager to resume your quest. You know me, never knowingly patient. Perhaps you could give me a brief update on your progress to date. We stopped Tyrus, saved the circle of fight, and broke the Matrix. There, ten words. You broke the Matrix? Twelve words. My mistake. You broke the Matrix? Still focusing on that, are we? You broke the ma- My half of the Matrix. It shattered when I deactivated Tyrus' skill switch. Frankly, it wasn't that robust. But your half of the Matrix contained the map to Cyber Utopia. Correct! Which is why the first thing we're gonna do when we escape, I mean leave, is find the greatest Autobot of all time. Thunder Clash! Ah, the very fact that you knew who I was referring to just... Ahem, sorry. Yes, Thunder Clash. He's having these dreams which he says are guiding him towards the knights. Look, Optimus, I know that you want us all here in case we need to testify at the trial or whatever, but Thunder Clash has gone all quiet on us, and I'm really worried about it. You're right. I do want you here until verdict's been reached. But maybe there's a way to expedite matters. Come with me. Megatron. Optimus. I'm told I'm going to stand trial. A lot of people would say that's more than I deserve. Stand up. There's someone I'd like you to meet. This is Chrome Dome. He's a pneumo surgeon. He- No. No! Get him out of here! Get him out! Guards! Guards! Megatron, please hear me out. Due process prevents me from asking how you intend to plead, but we both know that if you contest any of the charges, this trial could last centuries. The public wants us done, probably. I understand that, but I don't think that assuming every last detail of our war is in anyone's best interest. The good news is that manually recovered memories are admissible in court. If you let Chrome Dome inject you, he can corroborate your testimony. The trial will be over in days. You can lock me up forever. You can hurt me. You can kill me. But you don't get to tamper with my head. Up here is who I am. It's all I have left. Touch my mind and I will fight you. I will fight you and you'll be forced to murder me in my cell. And I don't think that would look very good. Do you? 
we won't be speaking again. I am about to sit in judgment on you, and there are rules. Optimus has to watch what he says. I don't. You're going to die, Megatron. And I'm sorry, but you deserve it. And you know you deserve it. I may be stuck here for the trial, but at least I'll get to see your execution. Prowl's pushing for a triple tap. Brain, Spark, Teacock. Three shots, then one hell of a party. Hey, maybe they'll bury you. Uh, where was it? Where did you used to work? Luna 2? No, no, no. It was no point, wasn't it? Down the mines. Four million years, Megatron, and you're going to end up right back where you started. Underneath no point. I hope it was worth it. Lot of us. What? I need you to do me a favor. Megatron of Tarn. You stand accused of crimes against the species, such a term being used in the context of this trial to represent a range of offenses. The principal accusations are as follows, that you, Megatron, founded a terrorist army and acted in pursuit of goals that were antithetical to peace, such as replacing the Senate and its successor, the Stratocracy, with an autocratic regime centered around you. That you orchestrated a prolonged campaign of territorial aggrandizement intended to culminate with the occupation of Cybertron and its second moon. And that you masterminded, committed, commissioned, and or endorsed a series of grave run atrocities to which the death of 4.6 billion Cybertronians can be directly attributed. The atrocities include, but are not limited to, mass murder, torture, forced combination, spark mutilation, the use of banned weaponry, and the institution of so-called peace camps. In addition to the foregoing, you are accused of attacking sovereign worlds and bringing about the deaths of a further hundred billion life forms. How do you plead? Guilty. And as an Autobot who has lost friends to them, close friends, you would agree, Gripper, would you not, that one's allegiance was no protection against attack? If Megatron wanted someone dead, the Decepticon Justice Division would oblige. That's correct, sir. He used them as his personal assassins. This is a good time, Rodimus. I don't want to interrupt if... Interrupt, please. God, interrupt. It's not that it's boring. It's just every victim impact statement sounds the same. Bad things happen. Part 405. At least we had some visuals. The DJ Day clip show. That was, though. The source of him. And the hooks. Hooks for his hand and his feet. How does that even work? Do you ever make lists, Adam Master? This? Like the DJD. Things you want to accomplish. Things you could take off. It's not a trick question, I was just reflecting on my progress to date. We're gonna pick up where we left off. With a quest, I mean. Are you in? Oh, totally! A million percent! Unfortunately, so are other people. The people who betrayed you. Betrayed me? You asked the crew if you should stay on as leader, and eight, nine people said no. They did kinda screw up. Did you? Because I'm with the majority who thinks life's more complicated than that. Here. What is it? A list for someone who likes lists. The eight nine people who wanted you gone. Where did he get that? Atomizer? Where did he get that? The vote was anonymous. That's the whole point. The vote was cast electronically. A mutual friend was debugging the lost size systems and there you go. Take it. Have you looked at it? Yes. And you need to know who's on here. Because some of them want to stick around. They'll put up with you if it means finding the knights. I've been thinking. And you, you could impose a limit, cap the number of people you can take with you, blame rations or logistics, or just say you had a vision. People laugh that stuff up. Set a limit and use this list to decide who exceeds that limit. Do you realize that if I even look at that, let alone act on it, I'm leaving myself wide open? I could end up on trial. I could end up in prison. Or you could end up with a crew that believes in you. And wouldn't that improve your chances of making progress? No. Take it away and no. Destroy it. Destroy it and forget we spoke. Okay. Fine. Ask me one more time and I will. Starscream. Lord Starscream. High Chancellor of the Refulgent Cybertronian Dynasty. Emperor Perpetua and Defender of the Realm. Hmm. And during the war, you served as Megatron's what, exactly? I've been his first officer, his lieutenant general, his air chief marshal. But mostly, I've been his whipping boy. And how would you describe your relationship with the accused? I would describe it as complicated. Starscream, it is customary after a guilty plea 
for the court to hear victim impact statements before handing down a sentence. However, I gather that you wish to speak in defense of Megatron? I stand here today not to defend him, no, but to explain him. I know him intimately, and I know that his pride will stop him speaking out. Like many here today, I was seduced by Megatron's rhetoric. Young, naive, and struggling to find my way in a world disfigured by a class apartheid and senatorial piety. I was entranced by his plans for the future. He described a better society, an outward-looking society, a society unafraid to stare down the anti-mechanical prejudice that was sweeping across the galaxy. Then, as now, I was proud. Proud of my planet. Proud of its people. I was determined to- Objection! Witness is grandstanding. Sustained. Today is not about you, Starscream. The crimes to which Megatron has readily confessed beggar belief. In their breadth and scope and scale, they are unparalleled. No justicism in the galaxy could consider even a fraction of what he fully admits to having done and failed to impose a death sentence. And that, Your Honor, is where I beg pause. That is where I say, consider this. A lifetime ago, Megatron set in motion something he could never hope to control. He tapped, almost by chance, into a groundswell of, of rage and resentment, and he was singularly unprepared for what happened next. And as for what happened next, well, we all call it a war because to do otherwise would insult the dead. But really, really, it was a riot. The war was a riot, and Megatron was a looter. Caught up in events, yes, but not shaping them, not coordinating them. A stronger person, a braver person, someone with an ounce of strategic acumen would have prevented the revolution from descending into chaos. But no, to the lasting regret of every Cybertronian alive and dead, Megatron is neither strong, nor brave, nor brilliant, nor possessed of any particular talent beyond survival. Throughout the war, he was assailed by aides and confidants who pulled him in all directions. And yes, I include myself in that number. More than once I urged him, I begged him to consider a ceasefire and was punished for it. Like I said, whipping boy. Your Honor, this tin pot revolutionary would have you believe he's some grand architect, a military mastermind with destiny at his heels. In truth, he was sidelined long ago, sequestered so that more accomplished monsters, heavyweights like Shockwave and Scoponok, could use this planet as a canvas for their own dark designs. Adult and impotent, on the rare occasions he tried to assert himself militarily, his campaigns were so gruelingly inept that they could only be construed as a cry for help. His grand experiment, peace through tyranny, was always doomed to failure even if some of us, the pragmatists and peacemakers, realized it too late. Am I here to defend him? No, never! But as a chosen leader of the Cybertronian race, as someone who must embody fairness and decency, I cannot in good conscience say anything, anything that would speed someone to their death. Four million years ago, Megatron set out to make our world a better place. Bedeviled by fundamental weakness of character, hindered by a frighteningly average intellect and cursed with an ambition that far outstripped his ability, he failed spectacularly. He doesn't deserve debt. He deserves pity. Your Honor, my client has indicated that he would like to speak to me in private. Very well. Court suspended for 30 minutes. I gotta tell you, boss, the trial's playing very well with your loyal subjects. Your approval ratings are doubled, and people haven't stopped facing your statue. Good vibes all around. Take word. Association. We're finally getting more shrewds than self servings Some poor deluded smug even called you honorable. Let's hope he gets the help he needs. I ought to say that we spoke to the focus groups yesterday, uh, before you took the stand. If that's an attempt at veiled criticism, Rat Trap, try harder. You're talking to an expert. I'm just saying. Back there, it sort of sounded like you were apologizing on Megatron's behalf. People I used to me pontificating that have turned out within 30 seconds. Would they remember is that I testified that I was central to proceedings? No. 
That speech was aimed at one person and one person only, and I could tell from his face that my words found their target. I killed him today, Rap Rap. However long the gap between the trial and the execution, however slow the axe, today was the day Megatron died. I have dispatched my tormentor, and the people are cheering me on. The higher I fly, the better the view. Yeah, the only slight blot on the landscape. Is that the Autobot readings are up as well? It's a line on a graph slam dance. I'm not sure how you want me to respond. It's a line that represents a softening of public opinion. Because of the trial? Because of the trial. For the first time since the homecoming, the public are seeing Autobot without a regime at the end. The word on the streets is justice. If you can convince the average Cybertronian that you believe in the rule of law, you're halfway to winning back their trust. So the message is, stay the course. Please be seated. Court is in session. Thank you for your patience, everyone. All from Agnes. You've had your 30 minutes. Is there anything you wish to say? Well, my client would like to change his plea. In addition, he would like to make a statement to the court and wait. Repeat that, please. My client now asserts that he is innocent of all charges. You're pleading not guilty. You are pleading not guilty. That's correct, Your Honor. He says he's changed his mind. Ultra Magnus, the statement that your client has asked you to make on his behalf, if Your Honor pleases, I am instructed to address the crowd rather than the court. Very well. I did not resist when taken into custody or protest when advice of the charges leveled against me. I was prepared to let justice take its course. What followed was not justice. I now know that Autobot High Command is so keen to promote a sterilized wartime narrative, an account of the last four million years that disburdens them of responsibility for any wrongdoing, that they will threaten to mentally violate a political prisoner unless he endorses their highly partisan version of events. In light of the foregoing, I submit that my earlier guilty plea a plea I unequivocally retract is evidence not of criminality, but coercion. As this trial has progressed, my disquiet has grown, to the point where I am no longer confident that this court can deliver a fair verdict. I ask you, how can it be in keeping with the principles of natural justice for one arch enemy to sit in judgment on him? Fortunately, the law of the land, the law of this land, offers an alternative. When a defendant's alleged crimes cross a certain threshold, it is within his rights to INCOMING! Steven, strap him in! As soon as you give the signal, we jump! Pack your bags, Megatron. You're leaving. Your Honor, is it an abuse of process to request that the presiding judge intervene? I will allow it. OBJECTION! Hold on, Megatron! I'm coming! I'm wearing a spare teleport pack. Put it on and we'll get you to safety. The backpack! Grab it and... Megatron? I'm sorry, Seaving. It was a nice gesture. There will be a brief recess. Strip away the posturing, and Megatron's argument is simple. Luna 2 isn't Cybertron. Different laws apply. Forgotten laws? Yes. Laws that should have been repealed 10 million years ago? Most definitely. But laws nonetheless. And it seems one of the quirks of Luna 2 law is that in certain cases, defendants have the right to be judged by the Knights of Cybertron. It's a technicality. Yes, precisely. A technical point of law. Which means we can't just wave it away. Tell me this isn't happening. Tell me you're not contemplating any outcome that involves Megatron not dying. This is your chance to be rid of him forever. If you keep hand-wringing, he'll slip right through your fingers. I guarantee it. Ignore the terrified Decepticon and read my lips. This needn't be a problem. All we have to do is move Megatron back to Cybertron and start over. Except the trial is already underway. You can't just, just shop around for a criminal justice system that's more sympathetic to your requirements. I think it's time you remembered which side you're on. It's not about sides anymore. It's about public perception and what would happen if you're seen to flout the law. I don't know in case what I think, but you know what I think? I think you should talk to the guy. Ask him what he wants. His old rat trap got a nose for these things. And I'm telling you, there's more to this than guilty and not guilty. If this is about the rescue attempt, I've already told Ultra Magnus that I had nothing to do with it. Though I have heard a rumor that hunger and esteem were themselves freed from the lost light's brig. 
Forget them. It's you I'm interested in. Megatron, the day before you took the stand, you asked Rodimus to pass me a Communicube. On it, you said you wanted your trial moved off-world, for the sake of the spectators. You said that only Rascal Arena on Luna 2 was large enough to accommodate all the people you'd wronged. Except it was all a ruse, wasn't it? All you were doing was maneuvering yourself towards a legal loophole. This isn't about loopholes. This is about how I am remembered. Rodimus made me realize that I might not be ready to, how can I put it, close the book on my life. When I took the stand, the Luna 2 loophole was just a contingency plan to be invoked should the need arise. In the end, it was Starscream who convinced me, inadvertently perhaps, of the need to postpone my final fate. I'd sooner live than allow him to write my epitaph. You talk as if you've been acquitted. You haven't. You've just postponed the verdict. But I don't want to be acquitted. I want to make amends. What you want, as far as Ultra Magnus can make out, is to find the Knights of Cybertron. True, but only because of where I'll find them. Cyber Utopia? Listen, four million years ago, I decided to change how we lived. I resorted to force only when I realized that the system had been engineered to withstand every other form of dissent. In the end, yes, I went too far. I broke the planet. And that, Optimus, is why I owe it to you, to everyone, to find a replacement. Put me on the lost light and let me find Cyber Utopia. I promise you, I guarantee you, that I can succeed where Artemis has failed. When I have secured a new home for our race, I will confess my crimes, all of them, and happily. And if the people line the streets to cheer me to my death, then I will cheer with them. I will lead the celebrations. Because I will know that before I died, I was able to do something worthwhile. What is this? I open my spark and you start typing? If I were to let you join the Lost Light, it would be conditional. I would attach a condition. I could lock you up inside Metroplex until Rodimus finds the knights and no one could accuse me of stepping outside the law. So here's how this is going to work. In exchange for freedom of movement, you're going to stand in front of the people, in front of the people you've wronged, and you're going to say that. Although I reject... <coughs> Although I reject the charges against me, I do not deny that I am the founder of the Decepticon movement. I started it, and I am about to finish it. I hereby renounce Decepticonism and its offshoots, and denounce all those who continue to fight in its name. There is nothing intrinsically special about our race, nothing that lifts us above non-mechanical species. We were wrong to assert ourselves. And to all those who follow me, I say this. Do not expect guidance or wisdom or answers. I have none. I never did. To those Decepticons still out there, I give one final order. Stand down. Discard your weapons, tear off your badges, and stand down. Free yourself from the shackles of a flawed philosophy, and move on. Well done. You'll leave tomorrow. If I was the person I used to be, I swear I'd. You'd kill me, I know. That's entirely the point. The Decepticons are over. The war is over. And thankfully, we lost. <laughs>